The sense that I get is that it isn't about separation, but creating the conditions uh, for the in Indigenous Church to be in partnership with the United Church of Canada in a good way and in the way that we ought to have been in partnership with one another uh, from the beginning. This means a change in structure for us as the United Church. And they're asking really, I understand, to be partners with us, to row down in a canoe the same direction, but in different canoes, supporting each other as, they, as we paddle. The themes that I uh, think about are, are those of uh, partnership, of mutual support. And those are the themes that I hear articulated in the words from the National Indigenous Council in its proposal to, to General Council 44. It's time for us to move towards a different relationship. It's time to set aside the notion of, of missions to, to Indigenous peoples, truly move towards being partners in God's call to all the earth. Certain persons uh, demand à quoi ressemblerait ou ressemblera la future structure. Il faut dire deux ou trois choses. Premièrement, il n'y a pas de structure définie pour le moment. Et quand ce remite, quand ce renvoi passera, parce que j'espère qu'il passera, alors on commencera à voir comment s'organiser. There's no new proposed structure figured out yet. If the remit passes, the Indi Indigenous Church will begin their work. It's very similar to what happened to us as the non-Indigenous Church. When we moved from a four-court structure to a three-court structure, we knew we were going to have regional councils. We weren't really sure what each of those regional councils would look like, and we figured it out as we moved along the way. Similarly, the structure of the autonomous national indigenous organization will be worked out over time. The indigenous church does not yet have all the answers for what the structure will look like, but they want the time and space to do this work on their own, while being in relationship with the rest of the church. Donc, oui, on ne sait pas exactement à quoi la future structure ressemblera, mais nous sommes confiants Avec le temps et en dialoguant ensemble, nous arriverons à quelque chose. An Indigenous Church has existed and been funded as a part of the United Church of Canada for many years. This has included funding for staff at former conferences like the All Native Circle Conference and BC Native Ministries as well as to local communities of faith and funding for the Indigenous Ministries and Justice Unit at the General Council Office. So as the Indigenous Church continues to be a part of the United Church of Canada, this funding will continue. Pour ce qui est de la question relative aux contributions locales, qu'on appelle en anglais assessment, il faut dire que les communautés autochtones jusqu'à présent n'ont historiquement pas été des gens qui contribuaient tout simplement parce que elles manquaient de ressources au niveau local. Maintenant, dans la conversation et dans le dialogue, ensemble, il nous sera possible de revoir les choses et de voir quelle attitude nouvelle prendre concernant ces contributions locales. Policy outlined in the manual apply to all bodies of the United Church, that including the Indigenous Church in areas of social policy, and hope is that moving forward, the Indigenous and non-Indigenous Church will work together to co-develop policy positions. The United Church of Canada has a broad theological spectrum. Not all people in the United Church share the same theological positions. However, we do share a commitment to scripture as foundational and to our doctrine and theologies as expressed in our statement of faith. 
for example, the 20 Articles of Doctrine from 1925, and a Statement of Faith from 1940, and a New Creed from 1968, and a Song of Faith from 2006. This includes the indigenous church, and the remit does not change that. The caretakers of our indigenous circle, in their foundational document, calls to the church, say that indigenous people will continue to practice their own spirituality alongside the teaching of Jesus. Respecting indigenous spirituality is a part of healing of reconciliation for the church. I would like to be really cautious and really critical of any narrative that includes doubting the capacities of indigenous peoples. Historically, those narratives have been used to infantilize and to delegitimize the agency of indigenous peoples, nations, and governance structures and used to justify the colonial project. And there are discourses that have become prevalent and embedded in our, in our society and in our uh, patterns of, of thought around indigenous people. I feel like those are racist assumptions that need to be refuted, that are dangerous and, and have had a a violent impact over the course of our history. In this case, it is also the case that we're not forcing anything on the Indigenous Church. This is a, a request that has come explicitly, intentionally, thoughtfully, and with the discernment from the Indigenous Church itself. And this change is the expressed wish of the Indigenous Church. The background on this is that in 2015, when the church made the decision to move from a four court to a three court model, the indigenous church made clear that it had not been fully included in the processes that led to this change. And so they called for more time to determine their vision for the future which they did in a document called The Calls to the Church, which was accepted in 2018. And so the remit is a direct product of the structures and processes articulated in that prophetic document that the Indigenous Church wrote. I think we should be receiving this, this proposal and this remit uh, with celebration and enthusiasm and recognize it as the movement of, of the spirit within community.